Okay. Uh, thank you once again. Um, it is a this issue that I want to talk about this evening, and thank you, Brother Baba and Ed, for allowing me to discuss uh, this Wednesday, uh, October 18th, uh, at the Municipal Council meeting in the City Hall at 6:30 is our opportunity to discuss the uh, changes um, that will be made in the zoning ordinance. Um, and these are changes that would disrupt the very fabric of our city. It would change our communities forever. Um, and so it is so important that we inform our residents uh, to come out and to speak up uh, for the top issues are making sure that we restore minimum housing standards um, and environmental justice protections you know, that continue to protect our community from flooding, um, more polluting facilities, warehouses. Um, we don't need any new liquor stores, bars, vape shops, hotels in some of the neighborhoods. And so this new zoning would allow that kind of development to occur on streets and communities where it just shouldn't be. We also want to make sure that we, are, we reinstate uh, the public notices and um, hearings for proposed developments. Um, in this current zoning changes that uh, the Municipal Council is going to vote on on the 18th, it takes away our right to speak up and, about these new um, developments that might come into our communities. And so we just want to make sure that the community understands because when it comes to zoning, everything is in the details. And in this new zoning ordinance, the devil is in the details. And, you know, we have a mayor who truly believes that it's important for residents to have a voice and to speak up. And this zoning, if it's passed by the municipal council, it takes all that away. You know, it's based on what we call the dad model, where policies are decided um, and then they're announced and then they're defended. We come from a community, and especially from environmental justice, that we have to have meaningful participation in the narrative of what our community is supposed to look like. And we have to have a seat at the table. And so with the way this has been presented, yes, there was eight community meetings, but residents responded. And we didn't get one response back from the city on the recommendations that the community um, put forth. And so we're saying, hey, just pump the brakes, take a pause, don't vote on this on the 18th, bring it back out to the community. Um, but right now, we don't think that's gonna happen. And so we wanna, I, you know, I personally wanna thank you on behalf of the South Ward Environmental Alliance, our five ward task force, you know, for giving us this opportunity to kind of talk about how important this issue is for all Norkers. Let's 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 back up because it sounds like just for folks who don't know, and and, and and you know, a lot of us, our community has a long way to go to be conscious, organized participants in what we now call environmental justice, even though Newark has got an incredible history on that front, right? Uh it, it sounds like, and I want you to just, just lay this out and, and, and be as uh, detailed as you need to. Sounds like we have something on the books that sound that's being tweaked, that's, not to, that's no longer nearly as sound as what we already have in order to appease a new wave of developers who wanna come in and just disregard all of what, what we have in the book that speaks to the very principles that you're talking about. You, 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 yes. You remember right on that? Right. So, so yes. how did that happen? How did this backpedaling take place? Well, you know, we originally started with the 360 master plan and the mayor made sure that there was numerous amount of meetings throughout the whole city. Organizations was involved, businesses were involved, residents were involved. And so we had an input on our master plan. So now that the master plan was adopted, now you have to have an adjacent zoning policy and ordinance that supports the master plan. But the problem is the city hired consultants, individuals who don't have 
You know, I'm a fourth generation Norker and individuals who are vested in this city. They have outside consultants who don't understand the history of our community. And so on paper, they're looking at what might look good for our community, but it won't be good for our community. And so from the master plan, the consultants that was hired by the city are verifying these, are validating these changes, excuse me, by saying, but the community, this is what they wanted in the 360 master plan. No, it's not. We talked about added green space in our communities. Yes, we want businesses, but we don't want businesses that harm our communities or put more pollution in our community. Yes, we want to make sure there's affordable housing for residents, but we don't want you to allow 78% of the city of Newark is owned by, you know, private owners, LLCs. You would allow the ability for AUD dwellings, additional units of housing, which is a garage in the back of a house to now become a house. And that is just something that Newark, we can't support that because we know, yes, if it was a homeowner, maybe the grandmother or the mother would then move into the smaller house, housing unit. But that's not the case for some of the Newarkers. That's just not the case. They're renters. And so that's going to be another opportunity for the developers to rent this space to somebody. And so everything that's in it, they're putting it under the skies that, well, this is going to make more affordable housing. And it's not because despite the inclusionary zoning ordinance, it will create incentives to demolish and redevelop current rent control housing units. So now you're going to increase the housing, but you're going to increase it. So the individuals who would normally want to live in our community and stay here, they'll be priced out because what you say is affordable is not affordable to our Norkers. And so this whole process um, that Deputy Mayor Allison Ladd and the consultants put together, I believe is not what the mayor intended it to be. Um, and now they don't want to kind of roll back because they think it's too far out of the gate. And remember, when you put zoning changes into law, they're on the books, you know, for the next 20 years. And so it will be difficult for us to then change the harm that they already did in our communities. And so that's why this is so crucial. Um, and I can send you the links um, to our pages with a 400 page document. We had to hire a consultant to help us because they was giving us a week and two weeks notice to then come and talk about a document that's 400 pages. So um, it, it, it is just, this is just not for Newark at this time. Um, and we're just hoping that the city, our elected officials who we elect and hold them in trust will just pump the brakes and say, hey, we've had over a thousand residents make comments. Let's maybe take another look at this before we vote on this new zoning ordinance. And you've you've been very polite and very gracious, right? <laughs> and I appreciate your regality, right? But gentrification is the MF, right? And, and, and you know, let's you know, I mean, are, are, are there real identifi identifiable forces that we need to be looking at and trying to out organize and isolate that that are are, are, are twisting the arms of folks who, who we voted for? And, and 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 right now, if we had to do the math, we got a city council of eight eight to nine folks. Right. Do where, where is the majority of our city council on this particular issue, given what you given what you're so rightfully raising? So it was nine members of the North Municipal Council. Four members are against it. Uh, that is Louis Cantana, Honorable Ramos, uh, um, Gonzalez and Silva. So you had two abstentions and two no's. The other five members are right now supporting this. Mm. And, and that's a sad mandate because the South Ward, 
the West Ward, the East Ward, the and the perfect. Central Ward the is where perfect. people of color reside. Right. That is where the most marginalized individuals live and who will be impacted by this. And we need our leadership to stand on the side of the residents and support us. But right now, they're not supporting us. And so we're hoping that if we pack that municipal council, it can tug on somebody to kind of say, maybe we need to look at this again. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You're ready to say something there. Go ahead. And this is going to be on this Tuesday? Uh, Wednesday, October 18th. Wednesday. So can you just explain the real danger uh, if, if this is allowed to pass in the council, make it real plain. If this is allowed to pass in the danger, it, what the real danger is to our people, particularly with, with you know, you know, you having five black council people who could dial this back. So if this is that harmful. Yeah, I'm sure no time for no abstentions either, straight up. I got, we got some folks we need to talk to. Yeah, so... So if, if if we're saying that this is that dangerous to our people, is there something that these particular five council people just don't understand? So can you just explain why is it so dangerous to our people? Well, you know, when you think about some of the changes and you're looking at changing one family homes where now the owner can convert it to a two family home without even notifying the residents. A two family home become a three family, a three becomes a four, where you used to could de develop maybe a 10 um, story apartment building, now you can make it into 70 and 80. So you're mm -hmm. gonna have overcrowding, right? Overcrowding in our community without transportation. So where you had a lot, for example, if I look at the corner of Bergen Street, and Lines Avenue, I grew up on Huntington Street, which used to be our, our city national bank. They're gonna convert, they can build a, um, a 20 story apartment building on that lot with no parking. You already have Huntington Street, where you have one family and two family homes and not everybody have a driveway. Where are people gonna park? We know that transportation in our community is a problem. And so then when you think about now changing one family to two family, two family, three, three to four, we already have flooding in our communities. The infrastructure that Newark is based, you know, was built on cannot even hold what we currently have. Now you're going to be adding to that infrastructure. You see the sinkholes that are occurring in our city. You see, you know, um, the flooding when it rains just for five minutes. Now you want to add more blacktop, more housing, and then you want to add, and it's not saying that I'm against businesses, but why would you put vaping shops, bars, more liquor stores in communities as opposed to bringing in more big green businesses, you know, mom and pop stores, you know, grocery stores? things that the community needs to help sustain them and support them. So that becomes dangerous because now you are increasing this neighborhood threefold with all these other elements that don't need to be in this space. And then lastly, I have to say this because I do think as Brother Baba said, developers have to be in the pockets of some of these council people because yeah. You're making decisions that only benefit them. 78% mm. of our city is renters. But now you're going to make it easier for developers to develop? That's dangerous because now I have a house that I've lived in all my life. I want to keep my house. You got these outside landlords that now they want to look at their house that was now a three family. Oh, I can make more money. I'm going to convert this to a six family. I don't have to notify the neighbors in this neighborhood. Mm. Now you're going to have more transient people moving in and out, which cause problems in our community. So it forever changes the fabric of neighborhoods. You know, 
And um, that that's why it's so dangerous. And it has to be stopped. It just has to be stopped. And so this is going to be Wednesday, uh, the 17th. The 18th. Wednesday, the 18th. And is that an evening? Uh, yes, yeah, 630. Oh. 630. And because it's coming up for second, um, re second vote and uh, final passage, you don't even have to sign up. You just come up and when that agenda item comes up, as many people who want to speak on this ordinance can speak. And so that's what we need. We need to make sure that we pack the room. Everybody comes on Wednesday, October the 18th, 630 City Hall, 920 Broad Street uh, to show up. Let your voices be heard to let people know we care about our communities. We care about our people and we need economic, environmental, you know, and social justice. And this goes against all of that. Now, is is this the first time it's coming up for vote? For final vote, yeah. Well, it, they had the first reading two weeks ago, you know. Um, so the, the way that the um, ordinances are passed in the city, you have the first reading, right, that the municipal council vote. And at that time, you have five people to say yes and four to say no. So that's why it was able to come up for second and final passage on the 18th. And so you 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 ID'd who those five that said yes and who those four that said no, right? So I said the four who said no. The five who supported it was our West Ward Councilman Kelly Dupree, our South Ward Councilman Pat Council, our Central Ward Councilwoman and MacIver, um, uh, our at large uh, Reverend Roundtree, and our at large uh, Larry Crump. Wow. Wow. And, and and you said this was put forth by Allison Ladd? Yes, the deputy mayor. And, and so the mayor, and I had a conversation with the mayor, and I do want to thank the mayor and my council and Pat Council for some of the changes. But that's why we shouldn't rush it. Because yeah. when I had some conversations with Pat Council, had some conversations with the mayor, the mayor didn't know. He was like, what? Of course we. it's in there that residents will be able to speak and say, I said, may it's not in there. And so this is why you have to have more conversation because the devil is in the detail. Nobody is reading 400 pages of documents. They're relying on their staff, right? right? Or somebody else. And we have to say, no, your staff, because you hire consultants, they don't have the love that we have for Newark in our community. They're paid to do a job. So they're doing the bidding of somebody else, not the residents. Mm -hmm. And so if we could get them to vote it down and give us more time to come back so you could continue to make changes because uh, they did make some changes based on what we asked, but we're not there yet. We're mm -hmm. not there yet. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and so the mayor, your conversation with the mayor was that he was not aware of some of the things that were in this particular ordinance or that he, he wasn't aware that they weren't aware of what was in the ordinance. Right. On that particular item about the public being able to speak, he wasn't aware of that. And this was several months ago. I haven't talked to him since. I saw him at the Juneteenth event. And this is how far we're going back. Mm -hmm. um, and he went back. And then I talked to my councilman, Pat Council, and they made some changes, but it's still not where it should to, it should be. Um, and so, you know, when you have someone like the mayor who believes in people power, this goes against that. Mm -hmm. And somebody, you know, the consultants, I'm, I'm not sure who it is because the mayor believes in affordable housing. They're saying this is the way to improve affordable housing. And we're saying, no, it's not. Mm. It's not, mm. you know, because the devil is in the detail. It's affordable housing for who? Mm. Not Norcas. Yeah. yeah. It's gentrification. And yeah. we know what that is. That means that the, the people who have stayed in this city and want to stay here, they're going to be priced down. Yeah, we, 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 we've had this conversation 
with the mayor based around, um, you know, what, what, you know, what the, what the, the income is in the city of Newark versus what the income is in the state. And the problem is, is that when they look at the AMI for the city of Newark, they're judging the AMI in the city of Newark to be that of the state, right? So the state is 37,000 and the city of Newark is 23,000. Come on, come on. Mm-hmm. So, so we've had that conversation and that is why we've got to be talking about not, not affordable housing, but we've got to be talking about low income housing, right? for low-income residents, right? That's something that they can afford. And that is why I think that that language needs to be changed where, where we're not talking about affordable, but we're talking about low-income housing, which fits the salaries of the, or, or the incomes of the folks who, who are from the city of Newark, who've been living in the city of Newark, and who have been fighting in this city uh, to stay here, right? Yes. So, you, so you're right. Um, in terms of all that you say, it, it 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 would seem to me though that that those very people that you just ID are the very people who uh, we should be able to count on to help us uh, uh, get this thing down back. Exactly, and that's what I'm saying because it's the people of color, the most marginalized, the people who need it need the help the most is this will definitely impact them more so than anybody because right. other folks we know they're coming to Newark and they could afford to come right right but the history the culture right these are people who want to stay right. and um we're just allowing them to be displaced like and thrown out like trash and and our people are better than that and they deserve more and so that's why we have to stand up um, because this zoning, these zoning changes is very dangerous and they don't help us. Um, it's an agenda by other people who don't really want to see us um, staying in our own communities. And that's what I believe and that's what I know. And that's what I'm seeing by these changes. Wow. Well, I, I, I just, you know, I appreciate you bringing this to uh, all politics are local and bringing it to our attention because uh, we definitely, you know, uh, don't want that to happen. I mean, because we, you know, we've had Charles Barron on, on this show and Charles is one of the ones who have been educated us. Charles, you should run him out of East Brooklyn. Yeah. yeah. East New York, he did not play that. Yeah. And they hated him. They respected him. He did not let them come into East New York, Brooklyn with that mess. Yeah. 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 And, and you know, you hear people already say, Newark is the next Brooklyn. It's been coming. And, and you know, again, we have to, you know, we want some changes in our community, right? We want certain kind of developments, you know, but we have to be able to have communities that can coexist and, and there's a mixture right. that it's not all for people who make a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, and more can stay in this area. The right. folk who make fifty thousand and under, you can only be here. No, right. we have to make sure we can be in all of the wards and live a better quality of life. Right. That isn't impacted by environmental degradation and nuisance. You know, with liquor bars and and vape shops. Like I don't even know why you have to. Tr- just establish a whole statement around vaping shops and and hookah, hookah bars. And I don't even understand why you even have to bring that in. They should mm. fall under the same rules, regulation, and guidelines like any other business. Mm. But you 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 know making a special kind of we'll dump them on us. I mean, come on. I don't that I don't understand. And so, you know, I thank you. I, I do want to thank the members of our five ward task force because this is just not the South Ward. We have members who represent every ward. And I thank them, you know, for standing up and fighting. And we don't want this to be a Hispanic versus a black. That's not what this conversation is about. Because when you think about the four individuals who 
you know, two abstain and two voted no. And I'm not even gonna have that conversation with individuals, right? Mm -hmm. The conversation we should be having, this is about all Norkers. And we know that the North Ward, right? And, you know, they have some things over there that a lot of our other wards never had and never will have, mm -hmm. right? And so, yes, they stand up and they fight, but we've been fighting in the other wards. <laughs> we've been fighting. And so we don't deserve this kind of treatment um, from our leaders that we elected. And so we just want them to take another look and stop saying this is only coming from voices of the North War or the East War. No, I'm a South War, fourth generation individual, and the South War is standing strong, just like all the other wards, you know. And the South War is where our mayor our senators, our congressmen, you know, our at large. And I mean, we have most of the elected officials in the South Ward. Right. And this, these changes will impact our ward the most. That. You can believe that. Listen, uh, now, now, Kim, are there some links that we can share uh, with our listeners? I just put our petition on, on our, our, the petition you have it on our Facebook page. Are there any yeah. other links? Uh, yeah, yeah, we need a, we need a, we need to have a call-in link or something like that. Uh, so you put up the www.linktr.ee backslash Newark zoning. I think I did. <laughs> and then we have, um, and then we have www.change.org. Oh, I put up change.org. That's what I saw. Okay. So that's one. And then where they can go for our resources is www.linktr.ee. E E slash Newark zoning. And that has the full letter that we sent to all our council people. It actually has the changes in the zoning. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a lot of resources, all the articles that um, have been posted. Um, it, it has the individuals um, that have supported us, Senator Teresa Ruiz, um, our assembly members as well, Pinto Marin and, and Spate, um, you know, so it has all those individuals who have been standing up and supporting us. And you can actually see it's in black and white what the zoning changes would be, what they was in the past and what we're trying to keep and maintain. So all that information is there for individuals to read. And if they still want to reach out to me, they can reach out to Kim Gaddy at um, South Ward, S O U T H W A R D E A at gmail.com. Put that, put both of those in the chat. I, 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 I definitely missed something trying to bring it up that quick. <laughs> I, <laughs> okay. I don't want to miss it. Yeah, Just so that we, 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 we can definitely go there uh, and download that information. And we need to post that on all politics are local. Yes, right, sir. we need to post that for Tuesday, so that folks will, you know, uh, be educated when they walk in that room uh, about what the facts are, right? Yeah. And and be able to have an educated conversation that is void of emotion and cussing folks out uh, in in the uh, you know in the council chamber have a conversation that is based around the very lives of the people that are going to be affected, right? Because, yeah. you know, I mean, we're talking about people, right, who are, in some cases, right, one paycheck away from being homeless. Yes, right? yes. And, and, and we've got to have those very real conversations with those people and they've got to be able to understand that if you have not read this document and if you do not understand this document, then what we need to do is have community meetings with folks who can read this document for us and explain it to us, right? So that way we can vote, right, intelligently about these particular decisions that you all are empowered to make. Right, because this is going to live long after you all are gone, and 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 you know we all ought to do something. Oh, you know, we're getting later. If you're not careful. Yeah, and we all ought to do something about making sure all of our people don't end up down at North Penn Station sleeping. Oh, yeah. 
right? Because yeah. this is very real. And 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 if you don't understand it, then you know what you ought to do is excuse yourself from uh, from being able to vote on this at this very moment, because this yeah. is it's very real. Yes, so, it is. Well, we need to we need that information. And we need to make it available, but we need community meetings, right? We need we need to have those uh, so that people understand what that is, and that is why. These particular people who are on this council are, are very important uh, to making sure that that those people uh, who you know don't make thirty seven thousand dollars don't get priced out onto the street. Right? Exactly, and, that, and that's the language you, we need to be using. Right, we need to we need to make it very black and white. Right, very black black. Right. Uh, just in terms of having those conversations, you know, and and, you know, there was a time when you all sitting up here wasn't making one hundred and ten thousand dollars either. Right. And and, and let's let's keep that real and and, you know, and explain that that there are young people who want to get their lives started in the city of Newark. And and unfortunately, if and this want to remain in Newark. Yeah, and others and the elders want to remain who are on fixed incomes, right? You know, mm -hmm. not afford, you know, for an owner to all of a sudden say, you because remember they did pass an ordinance uh that did not allow, as you know, did not allow the owners uh to come back and raise the rent, you know, fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars, right? They said that you could only the mayor had put forth, you know, this bill that said, look. You can only raise it by this particular amount. You can't go from seven hundred to all of a sudden asking folks for twenty two hundred. That's exactly. just important, right? Yeah, yeah, right. And that's why we need these protections too, because you know, you if we allow these changes to occur, more and more people are going to buy these homes. They, well, they're basically stealing them because our senior citizens, you know, they can't afford them. Uh, and people are walking in our neighborhoods, calling up on the phone and just saying, hey, I'll give you this much for it, knowing that that property is more value. And so then you have senior citizens when they should be enjoying their life, right? right. Now they're put in places where they shouldn't even be. They shouldn't even be living in some of the conditions that they're living in. And so you're exactly right. Um, you know, we have to be able to um, see the information, and that's why we put it out there with full transparency, um, and that's what we want the city to do as well, because right. when individuals see in black and white what you're saying, they're going to understand and make the best decision for themselves, right. and that's what the communities, it's not like we are telling it, no, the community read it and said, right. oh, I, I got to get on this, and so then we in turn respect, expect our elected officials to do the right thing right. for the people who elected them into office. Right. And that's all we ask them. Give us some time. What is right. the rush? Right. This is going to be on the books for 30 years. What yeah. is the rush? Yeah. Just take a pause, pump the brakes, stop. Let's have some more conversations. Yeah. yeah. That's all we want. Yeah. And, 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 and I think that that is exactly what, what should be said right, to all of those council members, right? She simply oh. said that I think that what we need is we need some church meetings, right? We need to we need to take this into the community. We need to have some dialogue. We need to bring some professionals in, right? And, and explain this to our people in very black and white language. Let's talk to those particular people who understand what zoning is, right? Let's, let's talk to people who are going to going to explain to us how somebody who has a two family or three family house now when the zoning has changed can literally go and tear their house down and build a you know a 22 floor apartment building right on my property and now all of a sudden the the, the median rent is going to be somewhere around $3000 a month right yeah. how yeah. much can you afford to live that in that and particularly if those jobs aren't in this community, right? Where are these people going to be working? Who have those jobs, 
right? Because we also know that a lot of the young people who are graduating in this city cannot afford to stay here. Why? Because they've got more debt than they've got income. Right. Right. If you if you if you you know you graduate from college, that's one debt, then you go to grad school, that's another debt, and then you end up going to law school or PhD, that's another debt, right? right. If you're not making income, that's misery to, to all the debt you got. Well, at some point, right, you either end up homeless or you gotta leave the city to go and try and find a job that's going to pay you enough money to pay back your student loans. Right. And I and I want to just put a, a thank you because exactly what you said, the the uh, Victoria Foundation actually gave us funding to hire uh, Damien from Hector Design, who was a former zoning officer for the city of Newark, because we didn't you know, we weren't the experts. And so I want to thank, you know, the Victoria Foundation for um, supplying us with that funding uh, to Southwood Environmental Alliance and ICC. Um, so that we can have this honest conversation. And exactly what you said, you have to have time when you bring in outside experts to kind of meet us where we are, right? We have to meet people where they are. And then you have to explain the information in digestible ways so that they can then internalize it and then understand what is really happening. And right. probably some of the council members need it interpreted in a way that they can understand it so right. then they can make a different you know vote but right. they're not saying that and they don't want to look like well maybe you know i just got to go along to get along no you right. don't have to right 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 you absolutely don't have to i mean that is that is why you're there you are you know uh, supposed to be protecting the people right and, and you know, you have a staff and that staff is supposed to be able to help you get the information that you don't have so that when you when you go to make, <coughs> excuse me, go to make that vote. Right. You you and, and, and the other thing is the council could also get experts. Right. To come yes. and explain that to them, you know, mm -hmm. say, well, here's what's been presented here today. Can you give me the pros and cons based around? What is being said, and 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 you know, is that a vote that needs to be made today? And if not, then you know, because if we're talking about something sitting on the books for thirty years, if it if it doesn't have to be voted on today, then we what we need is is we need to make sure that we've done our due diligence right, with regards to making sure that we understand all of the elements of this particular uh, ordinance, right? And how it's going yeah. to affect the people in this community. Right, and a person who is, is um, pushing the rush button is the Deputy Mayor Allison Ladd. She's just pushing this button. Wow. And again, and that's what I'm saying, mm -hmm. you know, who's in her ear, right? To make her, you know, fast track this. Right, right. Right. That's yeah, it, it, it would seem to me that that, you know, I mean, I, I don't know, you know, but but it would seem to me that someone, you know, uh, whatever this organization is, um, you know, these folks who did this, this, you know, uh, that you all hired, it would seem to me I would try and request a, a community meeting with the mayor before Wednesday. That's something, you know, I would do. And then ask the mayor if he would be willing to go to the city council with us on our behalf and ask from a community level to say, Mayor, if would you speak on our behalf? You know, we've explained it to you. You are our mayor, we voted for you. And would you ask this council who ran on your ticket if they would slow the brakes and give us an opportunity to be able to understand it? It would, you know, I'm Yeah, I'm, and we sent we sent it to him too, and we're gonna reach back out to him you know, on Monday as well, because we also had our staff hand deliver, you know, on uh, on Thursday, the same document to the council and the mayor. And, you know, we're starting to call, you know, because we know that sometimes, you know, information is held, you know, and the mayor might not see it until, you know, a certain point. And so right. we want to be clear, no, let's, let's take it to the mayor, even though we sent it to Deputy Mayor Allison Ladd, 
you know, I don't know how much she's, you know, giving the mayor or talking to him. So we mm -hmm. said, hey, let's also send it to the mayor. Again. I ain't for no let's call right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I'm 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 saying, you know, listen, you know, mm -hmm. what I'm saying is is the community needs to get organized, right? And right. The community needs to say, well, this is what's gonna happen on Wednesday. And what we're asking for, Mayor, is if you can give us 30 minutes of your time, right? The community would like to talk to you, and we're asking if you would speak on our behalf at the city council meeting and ask these people who voted on your ticket, right, if they would, would slow their brakes so that we can have some community meetings so that our community understand what this is going to be effective. Because we can't, you know, you can't, it, I'm just saying simply in my mind, you know, we can't assume that, oh, the mayor had an opportunity to read it or somebody really told him what it was about. But you know, if we ask a meeting and a group of us go down you know, and, and you know, with reasonable mind, I'm not saying, oh, most, you know, most, you know what I mean? All that. But we want to yeah. talk. We, we, you know, we're community representatives, mayor. We voted for you. And here's what we need we need some help, right? Yeah. And, and, you know, and, and, you know, uh, this, you're, I don't know, you know, uh, about Allison Ladd to know that, you know, uh, whether she's working in good faith or not. I don't know that, right? What I do know is that you know, if this is not a good, a good uh, zoning law, then we need to take a look at it, right? right? And you know, I'm gonna make it my business to to go and look at all of the information that you just put up there. I'm gonna make it my business between now uh, and and Wednesday educate myself on. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I appreciate so, that because that's all we want people to do. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and, and 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 you know I would hope that the community, you know, does the same. But I but what what I would recommend, right, is is that you all who have who have you know bought in the experts, you all who have done the research, you all who know this document, you know, I would request a meeting with the mayor between now and Wednesday, right, to have an opportunity to present that for him and to ask him for his help, right. And ask him, you know, man, here's what we say is in this document. Would you take a look at it and tell us, you know, what you see in it? And is it possible for you to assist us in us getting, uh, you know, some help, right? And what we're, what we're asking for in terms of help is we just say give us time uh, to delay it and to review it so that more and more people will understand what this document is. Right. And so we, we're definitely going to reach back out because we sent him something last week. Um, but again, we don't know if it got into his hands. And so right. uh, I thank you for that. And we're going to, you know, we're going to step it up and make sure <laughs> that we request it yeah. um, because we don't know. Like you said, we we right. we know who is in charge, his deputy right. mayor. But, right. <laughs> you know, we don't know what she's right. doing and not doing and what conversation she says she's having conversations with the mayor, but. Right. You can't assume that, right? right. Even, even if it requires, right. Y'all going to the steps of city hall, right. And having a press conference down there. Yes, right? That's having right. Meeting, right. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and simply saying, you know, here's a document that was presented and lay out the facts, right. Don't, you know, I mean, you know, these are the facts. Right. This is this is not hyperbole. This is this is not, you know, emotionally speaking. These these are the facts. This is what the re this is what, what our experts found. And this is what the effects are going to be. These are the, the you know, this is what the real income is in the city of Newark. And here's how it's going to affect folk. And 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 and, and you know, and yes, is it real? We can show you people who live underneath the bridge downtown North. We can show you people who, who go in the bathroom and they walk their, their behinds in City Hall. Why? These are people who used to live in our community, right? Mm -hmm. Who no longer can afford that. I'm not saying that's all of the folks down there, but that is some of our people. Indeed. Right? Indeed it is. And, and, and those are real pictures. Now, you know, if that requires bringing that to City Hall, taking those pictures, or bringing those people to City Hall, let's do it. Right. That's, you know, listen, I, you know, I saw, uh, 
you know, uh, one of the congressmen who used to be a prosecutor, right? Uh, you know, when they were trying to uh, prove the prove their points, what they did was they had their staffs go out and take pictures of people who were affected by the laws they were getting ready to make. And what he did was is that when his time came, he brought those pictures. He said, this is what y'all, this is what this is going to do. You wonder what this is going to do? That's what it's going to do, right? And those people at that, those Congress people had to think about it and say, you know what, let me pump my brakes. I didn't know that. And right. now other people, right, will begin to say, wow, I didn't know that. Right, mm -hmm. because remember, most of our people are visual, right? Most of us aren't like you said. We're not going to take the time to read a four hundred page document. We want you to tell that to us. They pay people like me to read four hundred pages, right? That's right. Right. Most people are not going to sit down and read four hundred pages, right? Yeah, they're not. So you know, I tell my mother in law that all the time. You know, when when she get medical stuff and all of that. And I tell her, I say, I read that stuff for fun, mom. You know what I mean? Right? Yeah, right. You know, you know, she's like, I can't understand one word to the I know. I, I get it, right? You know, and 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 but I'm reading that, but that's why we need people who can do that for us to explain that, you know. Uh right. you know, some I had a conversation, you know, with uh with with a brother today, and he was saying he was reading a document to say A and R, right? Well, we, we we did. It wasn't and and. It was and or. It sounds like he's saying either or, right? One or the other. Mm -hmm. Get them both. You got to. They ask you to make a choice and or. Right. You can get this one. Or you can get that one. Well, he couldn't dif differentiate between the and or. Well, that's what they tell him. Right. But that's how it's worded for our people, and that's why we have to make sure those of us who understand that that we help our people be able to get to that, you know, right. because, you know, you know, that old saying, Kim, that says that what is success if all it means is you're successful, but the masses of our people are not successful. Are not. That's right. What does that mean? Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's lonely, you yeah. know, being in that room by yourself. But I'd love to be able to take all of y'all with me. Yeah, so, that's right. I definitely support, you know, what you're trying to get done. But I, I would, I would encourage you uh, to definitely push to make sure that th this document is in the mayor's hand, that he understands what this is, and that you know, you all have at least had an opportunity to ask for his help. Yes, yes, and we're going to do that again. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for the opportunity. Ed, got to ask the question. Hold on, Kim. Yeah. We got to ask you one more question. We got to ask you the ritual question, Ed. So, you know, Kim, that we are a political hip hop uh, talk show, right? Mm -hmm. So, what we do is, is that you know, when we when we're going through, you know, as we as we're fighting these uphill and downhill battles, you know, we, we try and find music, particularly hip hop music or or, or spoken word that speak to uh, whatever those conditions are. What are you listening to right now that is motivating you to continue this fight? Well, you know, I, the last time I was on, I always put up my Queen Latifah. Uh, <laughs> that, that's just who I am, ladies first. Yeah. But Lauren Hill has been coming up to the top, ready or not, you know, the score. You know, you, you just got to, you know, ready or not, here I come, right? We okay. keep coming. So, no, but I'm ready or not the Delphonics first. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, so Lauren Hill today is I've been okay. listening to her, you know 50 years and and now she's coming back and gonna have a concert, you know what I mean? Yeah. So like I just yeah. been kind of like so proud, you yeah. know, of Lauren Hill and uh where she is right now. So yeah. she's she's gonna be, I think Wednesday she's gonna be down at the production. Yeah, yeah. Along with the food, we gotta go to City Hall before we go to to the to the. To the show. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's what we need. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, yeah, yeah. Is, is, isn't that something? Something that's important. They bring Lauren Hill on the same day. Oh. You know? <laughs> you know? Right. They always, you know? It's always a duality with us as black folks. Right? <laughs> do we do we go here to party or do we go here to fight for our survival? Get with this, you know? or you can get with that. 
I gotta be here, but then I want to run there. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's good to see you. I appreciate what you're doing. Very proud of you. You know we had your back. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Have a good one. Peace and blessings. All right. Peace. Ashe. Ashe. What's good, Randall? Peace, peace. Y'all can hear me? Yeah, we hear you yeah. fine. Donna was trying to get in. What happened? With the, with I don't that? know. Okay. I mean, I see it, but uh, you know. So there she goes. Yes. I am here, and I can't stay long. Um, I'm, I'm having problems with my video, so um, see your background. We don't see you. We see the ghost. Yeah, yeah. Ghost something's going on. You I have see to the, update. The lovely living room. <laughs> the lovely living room. But there, but you know when Kim was speaking about in terms of um, ordinances, especially when developments and changes to our city are going on. You know, we have to have. Um, teachings and we have to we really have to buckle down and um, pass an ordinance to have a community community boards because in I know New York and Atlanta when um, particularly when develop new developments is coming into the community they have to go before these community boards and so to make sure that the community piece is there but when cities don't have that and if uh, you have communities like our urban communities where people are working two and three jobs, um, the babysitter, this and that. And before they know it, they'll come home. <laughs> and then one day there's a, a, a high rise building in their neighborhood and they're like, what happened? Why didn't we know about it? And it's because we don't have a requirement um, that the uh, that we that the developers come into a community, they have the funds in their accounts. Um, this is, you know, part of their budget that they should have to go to each ward and speak to the wards and tell them the who, what, why, and where. And we, and even though it's not written, we can still demand it. And we have to demand it because when we're not a part of uh, the decision making, we are really, um, and, and affected by it and more so than not negatively affected by it and like um like ed said we'll all be living down um at penn station you know yeah. you you start in the cities you know asbury park is a a good city um to look at how it's becoming like the um across the railroad city one side looks like this and the other side look like that and um we, we we have to demand, we have to stop. So I hope they can get into that uh, public hearing and um, put a hold on it and whatever changes that they're requesting. And, you know, as a council person, um, you know, perhaps somebody can call like uh, several council members and ask them to print out uh, 25 copies and let people come pick them up or get them or have them walk them to the neighborhood so people can get in their little circles and talk about it, highlight some things and um, and strategically plan where well, we're going to ask this question, this question, this question. And if they have to put it on hold, they can put an ordinance on hold and come back to the next meeting. Um, it's, it's done quite often. And um, if if the residents are not happy, it should be put on hold. And Don, let me ask you a question as 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 an experienced council member. So now, you know, when 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 something when, when there's an ordinance of this importance, do do council people ask their staff to go read it, or do they have resources to go and bring in uh, experts themselves? Like like Kim was saying, they had got funding for an expert to come in and actually explain that document to them. So if we're talking about a development, it doesn't have to come out of the council's stat, out of the council's budget. It comes out of that developer's budget. Okay. And um, they, yes, they can have their staff read it. They can um, ask that developer to come to the community. Um, one of the things that I would do with every development that would come in. I would ask that they come back and they have a meeting that they will go to um, 
if it's in a particular ward, um, if you come up to Orange um, over on Park Street, down at the bottom where McDonald's is, you'll see that there's a Wawa there now. That develop that yeah. developer, um, Paramount yeah. Richard Dunn, he came out and he did several community meetings, and um, he he came to the church um, that's closest to that area. He went to City Hall um, because that's a central location. But the ask you 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 have to ask, and if you're not asking, and trust me. If you're dealing with a developer who's built in New York, that is what they're used to doing because they have to do it in New York. They have to go before the community, explain the development, answer questions, and um, and yield to uh, what the community is asking you know to do in terms of changes and things of that nature. Um, it's um, it, we don't have it. Um, the community boards here in uh, New Jersey, but it's nothing, um, you don't have to have it in place, but I think it's something that we really should have in place because it's that step that needs to be had. Um, and on Central Avenue, there was another, was that Richard Dunn too, Paramount, that they, where Scott's Lounge used to be at. Now it's a dollar store. And, um, we did a community meeting over at Walter G and one of the women um, in the community is like, how do you know we wanted a dollar store? You didn't ask us what we wanted. You're coming to tell us that you're putting a dollar store. What if we wanted a community center? What if we wanted? And, you know, it was, um, and actually I'll send, if I find it, I'll send it to you, Ed, so you can post a community meeting. You can see, mm. um, how that one turned, how that particular community meeting turned out. But in New Jersey, again, we're not used to doing it because it's not something that we require. But I know New York developers um, usually say we didn't do it because nobody asked us to do it. You know, that's that's the thing. I, and now I, I should have asked Kim that, that question, Saeed. Has there been any community meetings, right? Have they she said there were. They she were. said they have a they have a five ward task force that met in all five in, in all five yeah. communities. Okay. Yeah. And 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 I hope they bring that information on on Wednesday, right? That whatever whatever. See, there's another question. See, there's another factor in there. It's the influence of these big developers. These influences, you know, that, that puts the, what did they give for those five votes that they expect to get? See, that's the question. Right. That's it. That that is the question. As they said, I wrote, I wrote, but now you have asked the right question. Uh, <laughs> but uh, um, and and, I, and that would be shocking yeah. if we if we find out that our people have actually been paid off, uh, hmm. to, to you know to vote uh, in the way that they're voting. Right now, that that would shock the hell out of me. Right, because I would believe that these particular people would be above uh, reproach. On that level, these are all people that whom we know, right? right? So, in my mind, I would, I would, I would tend not to lean in that direction. But you know, you know, just from where we live at, we understand that that's a real question you ask, you know, mm -hmm. uh, because we know that's not beneath developers to mm -hmm. go and pay people off because we got people who are in prison for, for, for you know, doing those exact things. But, okay. but we would like to believe. Then there's got to go. I'm sorry. Let me mm. <laughs> go. Go buoyant in your uh, suit there. pocket. Oh, <laughs> there. Oh, there. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> Put okay. it in the wrong Put suit jacket. Old and <laughs> well, listen, y'all. Uh, y'all know this is not our time. That's right. Uh, that's right. Now that we all up in this space. Rhino, but I you just gotta come and she coming like bow. Yeah. yeah, I know, and I'm sorry, and I had to, I wanted to be there while I was Kim, but I have to sign off because I have to catch a 918 train. But um, what's the word I wanted to leave Rhino with tonight? Rhino, I'm glad to see you. I know you had a family emergency last, uh, but I what is the word? Um, what was the word? They in, entanglements. That's what I wanted to leave you with. That word, Rhino. Okay, <laughs> and we'll talk about that later, sir. <laughs> All right, guys, have a blessed right. evening and talk to you later. Okay. Bye bye.
That's 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 interesting, Ronald, that she would leave with that. 